Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday, September 6th, uh, Reflections on the Rock. We're going to begin tonight with um, a song that we're used to singing um, um, either at Advent or at oh, yeah. you know, the beginning of Lent, right. or, um, because it's usually about Jesus. But we're going to be looking at another part of the Exodus story right. and how people were um, expected by God to prepare the way mm. for oh, the okay. coming Exodus. And so let's begin with prepare the way. Let us pray. Oh God, we know that you are a God of surprises, and we know that you hear our prayers. Help us prepare ourselves to be ready for however you might answer them, hmm. this night or any day. Amen. Amen. We continue the story. Um, of Exodus, right? But we, it's a giant leap forward yeah. from where. I mean, last time we talked about the burning bush, right? And the great right. name, the great name, unpronounceable name of God. Um, it's likely that this story um, would have been used to sort of explain why the Jewish people developed this Passover, Passover. Yeah, okay. um, ritual, um, and and I think. There's lots to um, to think about in this um, text, understanding that we are not Jewish, so we don't right. necessarily um, understand even all of the intricacies of that. But as I was reading through it, um, and I invite you all to just think about it the same way, um, um, just listen for a word or a phrase mm. that comes to you. Um, because I think there will be messages for our spiritual oh. journeys. So. Oh, and the the Hebrew people are still held captive in Egypt. In Egypt. They have not left Egypt. Right. Okay. But we have just had a series of plagues. Oh, right. That apparently come from God to try and persuade the Pharaoh to let them go. Right. And um, and the last one is the death of the firstborn. <sighs> okay. Um, and right before this. Okay. All right, Exodus 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on, two, on the two dorsed posts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. <laughs> Very specific recipe. Wow. You should let none of it remain until the next morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. 
your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Well, that sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Perpetual ordinance. Yes, and do in remembrance. Do in remembrance, yes. I mean, that's why we do any ritual. Yeah. To remember. Right. And we've talked about that ad nauseum with the the Psalms. Mm -hmm. You know, we do this to remember, to remember. Um, And because um, we follow the way of Jesus, therefore we include the history of the Jewish people as part of our own faith history. But I have to say, up front, um, disclo- full disclosure, I don't understand or um, appreciate in any depth the significance of these rituals yeah. for the Jewish people right. then or, or now. Or yeah. now. Um, I only know how to do Lexio Divina, which is when you come up with a text that you're going like, <coughs> you know, it's like from a recipe book or something. Um, then you listen and you listen for words that come to you that that strike you so i want to just move through the text very quickly and pick up a couple of things that speak to me and why they might speak to me and then ask the question or maybe not even ask the question maybe i'll just look at you and say Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. um, because what does it mean to my journey to our journey um as a community of faith here at Covenant or um, our denomination or us as Christians or whoever you want to identify it with. It is certainly, it's a communal text. Um, But I think it's not just for us as faith people, it's for us as human beings Mm. um, who share one higher power. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because whatever we may call that higher power, we all need um, to feed our spirits. Yeah. Um, so it, it starts with that unpronounceable name that um, um, Jews are not allowed to speak out loud, which mm. is what we got at the last time we I am who met. I am. Yeah, mm-hmm. I am who I am. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, you know, so this is, um, it's interesting, the very first thing that struck me was this, um, thing about um, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. Yeah. Um, apparently they had no calendar. This, God is creating something new here. Oh. This is, a, this is the beginning of a people becoming a people. Right. They will have a shared calendar that is not the Egyptian calendar. Mm. This is beginning um, to view time differently. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That might be a useful mm-hmm. thing to think about. You know what? Um, what are my new beginnings? Um, and then what comes next is all about this ritual, which of course we got confused by, and um, and most of us probably tuned out as Anne was reading that because you're thinking, oh, that's just way too much information, too much information. And it starts out, you have to get this lamb on the 10th of the month, and then you don't kill it till the right. 14th of the and month. What is that about to do? Don't boil um, it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah all, those, it all those details. I don't think the details are as important, whether it's a sheep or a goat, um, um, whether you're a big enough family to have one or you yeah. have to go to your neighbor. I think the key for me is, number one, it has to be the best. Right. The best, of the unblemished, best. the unblemished 
firstborn lamb, whatever, um, has to be, what you offer God has to be the best. Right. And, and understanding that if these are sl- enslaved people, um, they don't have much. Right. Where are they going to get a lamb? A lamb, right. You know, this is going to require some community sharing. Huh. Um, and I think that God understands need um, and expects sharing. So that might make me think about some of the things we do. The important thing, though, I think, is that it's a ritual. And a ritual um, is a good thing. I mean, it's, sometimes we just blindly do what we do. But we had an experience on Sunday yes. um, here where we, um, we, did, we did a ritual that um, it sort of came out of the blue that mm-hmm. we had to experience as a community. And, um, and why do we do it? Because, because of remembering things. Right, right. Um, That's interesting. Because of the importance of doing things that remind you of why you're doing them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they, um, they we're doing this because in this case, um, it's not so much remember what God has done, but it's God's doing something and we don't understand it yet. Right. But we mark it with this ritual. And it's a ritual of incredible obedience. Oh, I was just going to use that word. Yes. Because they don't know what God's going to do. Um, you know, there's there's all this stuff about it has to be a, a year old male and um, the firstborn or the blemished and whatever. Now, I don't know why, what the details of that is. Um, but, but what really matters, I think, um, in all of this, with all the little funny details that are, not, that are serious, but um, not funny in that sense, but odd details, is to imagine yourself as a recipient of this word that Moses is passing, and Aaron are telling everybody, mm-hmm. here's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And they're all going, oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, because they, but bear in mind that they have seen all these bizarre things happen. So they have seen that God um, is keeping some kind of promise. Right. I'm, I'm at work here. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing something. And I believe that some of this is, um, is also giving them, you know, that 10th to the 14th thing, um, also gives them a little bit of time to sit in not knowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where the trust comes in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, and to wonder um, and to wait for God's next instruction. You know, I find myself praying all the sorts of things and, and then sort of looking immediately for the answer and not sitting and waiting and, mm. and watching because I don't know how God might work in an answer to one of um, requests, you know. Hmm. Um, and then there's this whole thing about the assembled peoples, you know, gathering and, and slaughtering the lamb. This is a communal practice, the faith journey um, or the spiritual journey, if you're not even attached to a faith community, is, is, um, is communal. Mm-hmm. It's something we share as human beings. It's not, um, it's not a private, um, just get me saved and get me into heaven thing. That's right. not what the spiritual life is about at all. Um, and then once this gathering has happened, it, then they're sent home to wait again. Mm-hmm. And with very specific instructions, you do this, you take the blood, and you do yeah. this, and you do this. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pass over, and that's where the word Passover comes from. Um, and then all of that kind of instructions uh, and burn the leftovers. And I, I, don't, I don't know um, the meaning of all of that. And I don't need to know, because mm. what strikes me is that this prepare the way thing is that you're, you're supposed to eat it. Your loins girt means you've got your, um, your robes tucked up, mm-hmm. ready to run. Mm-hmm. You, these, mm-hmm. you're and you've got gonna, your sandals, too. And you've got your sandals on, and you've got your staff. You're mm-hmm. ready to move. Um, you're being prepared to move. You don't know when. You don't know how. But you can feel the pace quickening in that story. Eat it hurriedly. Mm-hmm. Yes, eat it mm-hmm. hurriedly. You know, 
and then the, the description of I'm going to pass over and here's what I'm going to do. Now, none of us much likes this image of God, yeah. the, um, the dreadful slayer of awful, awful, horrible, violent things. Um, but it's, it clearly was um, an important image for the ancients and, and for many people, especially literalists today, um, and for our general culture we do tend to act as though um, God is going to smite the mm. bad guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, that is hugely hopeful for an oppressed people who have been treated violently. Then of course they think that the only answer is it's bigger violence. violence. So it's got to be, this is God. God's coming and God's going to do this violent kind of thing. We still act as if and live our lives as if might makes right. Um, in our culture. Um, and, and we who believe otherwise um, often just feed, feed mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I am just, I, I can't remember, I think it's um, um, attributed to Jimi Hendrix, but it's something about when the love of power is overcome by the power of love, love. Mm -hmm. then there's kind of hope mm -hmm. for the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think to myself, we have to, um, we, it's not that God has changed, um, it's that our way of looking at God has changed right. over the centuries. Right. Um, and some of us are stuck in that um, might and violence um, power that what you have to do is have a bigger, stronger stick. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've got God, you've got the biggest stick of all. You know? Right. Uh, Friday, um, we're talking about the double-edged sword. You know, you can, yeah. You get them, yeah. Hmm. Um, and then it, you know, it ends ends with this remembering thing, as you said. Observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Yeah. Um, repeat um, meaningful experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Build them into your life. Even if it's saying grace before a meal, mm -hmm. um, don't just do it at home. Do it in a restaurant. Yeah. You know? Um, examine your belief in God and who you think the rescuer is going to be. Um, hmm. Is this the God you worship? Um, and if not, that's all right, because God, can, God doesn't much care what we think of God, but um, I think it, it, it matters. It matters a lot. Um, so all of this just kind of comes up to me as a, a bunch of questions. So what's your faith story? Mm. You know, this is the faith story of the Jewish people and how they got this one ritual. Mm -hmm. um, and our liturgy over the year, um, repeats the story yes, it is. Um, over and over again. But what about our personal history? Yeah. How often do you remember your personal history? Mm. Um, you know, that young man who came on Sunday mm -hmm. had no personal connection with this building, but his faith story came from this That's building. That's right. Yeah, it did. Um, um, another question that it raises for me is, um, how seriously do I take God's action in my life? Hmm. Do I notice what God's doing mm -hmm. all around? When it, it comes and, as a surprise. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and what rituals do you participate in and why? Um, you know, I can, I can remember um, as a kid going home from school and there was something about you, you couldn't step in a, a, a crack. A, a, oh, it'd a, break your mother's back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it was one of those kind of rituals, and you think, where the heck did that come I from? Know. You know, I don't worry about it now. I step right on the crack. It just <laughs> it doesn't matter so much. But, and then the other one is, how has your image of God changed mm -hmm. over the years? Mm -hmm. If I asked any of you to draw a picture of God when you were a child, oh, yeah. and then maybe when you were a young adult, and now, what would be the difference? Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be a throne. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Would some, for some, it might be. Yeah. You know? And that exercise alone would tell us something about yeah. who we are. And, and then, 
do our lives um, practice um, waiting and believing that God is doing a new thing? Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to sing a new song on Friday. Right. Um, um, but that we need to trust um, that God is always doing a new thing. And whatever we hear as a voice from God, we, um, we listen, we obey, we wait, mm -hmm. we wonder, mm -hmm. um, and we're always ready for the next move of God. Right. Interesting. Well, I learned a lot there, Margaret. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm now, as I was listening to you um, reflect on this, because uh, there's a particular part as I was reading it uh, where um, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And mm -hmm. so we're going to talk a little bit that, about that kind of thing on mm -hmm. Friday when we pair the Psalm right. 149 with this mm -hmm. one. Wow, yeah. see, I, I kind of had a feeling um, the stories in Exodus were just going to flesh out a lot of things I hadn't thought about before. Right, but, right, and yeah. that's good. Yeah. But New they, we wouldn't know them if someone hadn't remembered right. them and passed them on. Yes, yes. Hmm. Well, speaking of remembering and having that kind of uh, dialogue, when you, when you put... Um, stories to music, they just sort of uh, plant better in, in mm -hmm. people's memory. Mm -hmm. And there's a song we'll sing um, once in a while from our faith. We sing a hymnal called Deep in the Shadows of the Past. Mm. So that's going to be the music um, under our prayer. Uh, we do have uh, prayer requests um, embedded in the prayer, but certainly um, if you have a piece of paper, make sure that you write down a couple of these names um, to hold them in prayer. So deep in the shadows of the past. Mm -hmm. Deep in the shadows of the past, you, O oh God, led your people to freedom. And yet you didn't stay in the past. You still call us forward to remember the past and give us hope for the future. Pass over us with your spirit that we may trust your presence with us to guide us in the way of peace and justice. We pray tonight for our children, youth, young adults returning to school. We pray for teachers and administrators, lunch monitors and janitors. May they find the new year to be an adventure. Keep them safe and focused on learning for those of us who are no longer involved in the day-to-day -day of school, remember and be thankful for the mentors and guides who helped us through those years. We pray for the grieving, the depressed, the anxious. We pray for those recovering from surgeries or sickness. And we pray for those experiencing the resurgence of COVID, remembering what it was like three years ago. Mm -hmm. We lift up Reverend Paul Gongloff. We pray your spirit surround him in healing power from his stroke. And we remember to thank you for the gift of your grace. Mm -hmm and give thanks for those who taught us the stories mm -hmm. deep in the shadows of the past. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trusting in the beauty of your love and grace, we joined in praying the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. That's a nice song. We should sing it more often. Mm -hmm. It is. It is indeed. So, um, what's what's new around here? Announcements. So, well, we're going to do. We're going to look at Psalm 149. The lectionary has paired. Now I realize, as your brilliant reflection just demonstrated, <laughs> that they're very connected. Uh -huh. So it's Psalm 149, second to the last one. Yes. And so it um, must be crazy. It is very crazy. <laughs> Uh, and then I just, I want to let people know, um, I'll talk on Sunday just briefly about this as well. We had a rummage sale a few weeks ago, and our goal was to make enough money to pay one month's um, interest on our line of credit. When we did the renovation on the elevator and the um, whole uplift, we had to take out a, a line of credit. And so we did. We actually exceeded it by quite a bit which means that any contributions made to the uplift renovation in September are completely toward principal. It would, no portion of it would be used to pay interest mm. in that. So I'm encouraging everyone to just give something toward the uplift renovation. You could do it on the website, you can send in a check, you can uh, be here on Sunday, there will be some envelopes for you, but everything that people give $10, $100, $1,000, all of it will go toward paying down that principal. Great. That's our goal. Yay. And, and plus, yes. I, was, I was glad that we met we, our goal. That's great. So we have um, our announcements. There we go. Is that it? We have a... No more announcements. I, th no. I don't... I think so. I think all right. we're done. Then um, our closing is him. Um, is trust and obey. Seems like a, a, a no-brainer yeah. from this text, yeah. considering how much unknown they were yeah. faced with. Right. How much incredible social upheaval was going on all around them. Um, and all they could do was trust yeah. and obey. Yeah. So in, a day, in our days of social upheaval all around us, let us stay centered on the God who um, uh, keeps promises, and who um, is always working for good. Um, and let us always trust and that yeah. and obey. Yeah. Good night. Good night.